Hey folks, in this presentation, I'm going to summarize the properties of waves or parts of a wave. Here are some key terms that we're going to use throughout this presentation. So if you'd like to pause or review or refer back to, please do so. Um, the four main parts of a wave that we're going to um, outline in detail are frequency, amplitude, wavelength, and speed. Some of those are actually emphasized in this transverse wave here. In this transverse wave, we could see that some of the main parts we're going to be discussing are the amplitude or the height, um, a wavelength, which is the distance between the crest and crest of a transverse wave or anywhere a wave repeats. Um, crests are the, the highest point of a wave and troughs are the lowest point of a transverse wave. Um, this is a transverse wave because it's traveling up and down or perpendicular and right angles to the direction the energy in the wave is traveling. So let's start with frequency. Frequency is the number of waves that pass a certain point in a certain amount of time. So I could see that this is a higher frequency because the number of waves that will pass in the same amount of space and time is more than a lower frequency wave where less waves are going to pass in the same amount of time and space. So this is a higher frequency because you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, waves passing in this same amount of space as maybe one or two waves. So this one has a higher frequency because more waves are passing in a certain amount of time compared to a higher frequency. Our ears uh, interpret frequency as pitch. So because this has a lower frequency, which isn't even one wavelength here, our brains interpret that as a low pitched sound or a very deep sound. But when our ears hear waves reach us at a higher frequency or more waves are reaching our ears in less time, our brain interprets that as a higher pitch or a very, you know, high pitch sound. Amplitude is the measure of how high a transverse wave is from the center up or the center down, but traditionally really from the center up. Um, so um, be sure that you're not measuring from like trough to crest. It's always from the center, this line here along the center, um, up or down. So the amplitude is the height of a wave simply. The amplitude is important because it actually determines a lot about the energy of a wave. So if the amplitude is not as high, it's a lower energy. And if the amplitude is much higher, it will have a higher energy. So the way we interpret that is this would be basically like whispering or a lower sound or not a lower pitch, but like a lower volume. And then if you have a higher amplitude, this would be interpreted as a louder sound. Um, they're, the same, they're the same frequency. So you would hear the pitch the same. So whatever pitch this is, it would sound the same pitch, but just as a lower volume, this would be the same pitch as this one, just a higher volume. So amplitude is really the volume or the intensity of light. So this would be a greater intensity light, and this would be a lower intensity light. Um, so just as I was discussing is this amplitude, we would we would interpret that as a quieter sound. And notice that they're the same frequency. We did not, we did not, we did not manipulate the number of waves that are passing. And this would be the same the same sound, but just in a greater volume or a louder volume. So amplitude tells us volume or intensity of light. Now wavelength is, is extremely important because we use wavelengths to kind of um, interpret waves or classify waves. And a wavelength is anywhere the wave technically repeats itself. But I promise you, it's just very easy to go from crest to crest so you don't make a silly mistake. But technically, anywhere the wave repeats itself is a wavelength. And the wavelength is ultimately going to determine the energy of a wave and the frequency because if these wavelengths were smaller, then the frequency would increase. But wavelength is anywhere the wave repeats. And um, I would encourage you to practice from going crest to crest. So as I was saying, these wavelengths really do kind of classify waves that we see in the universe. So you can see here gamma, gamma rays have very small wavelengths. In fact, they're smaller than the nucleuses of atoms, which is why they're so dangerous and have such a high energy. So when the waves are really, really small wavelengths, they have a high energy, but and they also have a high frequency. But when the waves over here are extremely long, and these waves could be longer than 
football fields, and technically radio waves could even be like larger than Earth. So radio waves have enormous, long, long wavelengths, and they also have a, you know, a low frequency because less waves are going to pass, and also a lower energy. And we're going to start examining this electromagnetic spectrum a lot more carefully, and it's all organized according to um, wavelength and frequency because they are di directly related. So, you know, here the wavelength is really long, which also means that it has a low frequency. And here we have tiny wavelengths on the other end of the spectrum, which also means a higher frequency because more waves will pass in a certain amount of time. So the speed of the wave is basically just like the speed of anything. It's, you know, the distance a wave travels in a certain amount of time. And what's interesting about electromagnetic energy is that um, it all travels at a constant speed in the vacuum of space. But where speed gets really interesting is when you actually change the medium in which they travel. So um, the medium is the material in which a wave travels through. So what's interesting is, for example, sound here. Sound surprisingly travels faster through solids, as you can see here in this data, that the speed of sound is significantly higher in a solid compared to a gas, which sounds strange because we all interpret sounds through the air, but it turns out when you actually measure their speed, um, sound does not travel as fast through gas as it does through solids. And that's basically because in gases, the particles are further apart, and in order for, you know, a sound to interact with the next particle, they're farther apart and travel slower. But when you have solids and the particles are really close to one another, the energy can transmit from particle to particle um, a lot faster. Um, so this is going to be immensely important because when we study other waves, they also travel different speeds and different mediums as well. You know, for example, light could travel through gases um, a lot easier because they are less dense and light cannot travel through solids very well at all. So um, this is a really important concept that has a lot of applications is that when a wave enters a different medium or a different type of matter, the speed of it changes and that causes a lot of phenomena to occur and also has a lot of uses. All waves travel at different speeds in different media or different types of mediums. So for example, sound travels faster in solids than it does in gases. And that's not true for other types of waves. Um, so here we can analyze the speed of light and in the, the speed of light in the vacuum of space where there is no medium. And first of all, electromagnetic waves are the waves that can travel through the vacuum of space. They are not mechanical waves. Um, they travel at the ultimate speed. But when they interact with other mediums like the air, the air actually interferes or slows it down. And water is a little bit more dense and slows them down. And glass is more dense than diamonds. So light can travel through these mediums, but it changes speed and ultimately it will change direction, which is going to be important when we study the behavior of waves because all waves travel at different speeds through different mediums. And all wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum travel at the, the same speed as the speed of light or C through a vacuum. So there are also compressional longitudinal waves. These are not electromagnetic waves and they also have wave parts. And they're really the same thing. Anywhere the wave repeats is the wavelength. So generally that'd be compression to compression. Um, you know, when the when the wave is closer together, that is called a compression. When the wave is stretched apart, it's called a rarefaction. And anywhere the wave repeats is a wavelength. The amplitude would be the size of the compression. So if I pushed it, the slinky harder, it would create greater amplitude or a louder sound because sound waves travel in a longitudinal compressional way. But if I whispered, this compression would be lower or the particles in the air would be um, compressed just in a smaller area. And um, these are the properties of a longitudinal compressional wave. So make sure you're aware of what a compression is. Be able to identify a wavelength, with, which is generally compression to compression, and make sure you go from the same location. You know, in this case, they looks like they went from the middle of the compression to the middle of the compression. Or you can go from the beginning of the compression to the beginning of the compression, anywhere the wave repeats. 
So here's a summary of the two different types of waves. Here's a compressional wave because it's traveling parallel to the direction the wave's traveling. Here's some compressions. Here's a rarefaction. Um, I could go wavelength from compression. I'll use the middle here to the middle there. That would be wavelength. And um, the transverse waves are really the properties that we're going to utilize the most. Remember, amplitude is middle up, not from the bottom up. So here's the amplitude that would determine the loudness or the brightness of a light or the loudness of a sound. Wavelength go crest to crest just because it's easier to identify. And um, frequency would be the number of these waves that pass a given point in a given amount of time. So I would, I would classify this as a relatively lower frequency because I only see one wavelength, two wavelengths, not even three wavelengths. Um, be sure you can identify the parts of the wave, um, you know, using descriptions. And uh, be sure you can identify the parts of a wave in these diagrams and also exemplify how they impact um, phenomenon that we experience, such as volume of sounds or brightnesses of light or um, frequencies and energy. So a greater frequency would be a higher energy. Um, a lower frequency would be lower energy. Be sure you can identify parts of a compressional longitudinal wave. This is an example of sound waves. These would be representative of air particles. Um, be sure you can identify where the waves repeat. And I hope this presentation was helpful.